In this video, we'll be talking about related angles, or sometimes called reference angles. A reference angle is the acute angle between the vector and the x-axis. So if we have an angle of 150 degrees, 150 degrees is more than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So our vector lies in quadrant 2. The 150 degrees is measured from the positive x-axis to the terminal side of the angle. So this is our 150 degrees. The reference angle, or the related angle, is the acute angle between the vector and the x-axis. So since this is in the second quadrant, it'll be this angle right here. And we would find that by taking 180 minus the angle. And we would have a 30 degree related angle. If our vector was at an angle of 215 degrees, 215 is more than 180 and less than 270. So this angle would lie in quadrant 3. We again measure from the positive x-axis around counterclockwise. So this angle is my 215 degree angle. My related angle, or reference angle, is this acute angle that's formed by the x-axis and the vector. We could find that measure by taking 215 minus 180. So our reference angle on this one is 35 degrees. If our vector measures a 310 degree angle, 310 is more than 270, but less than 360. So this angle then, or this vector, would be in quadrant 4. We measure from the positive x-axis around to the vector, so our angle then measures 310 around counterclockwise. The reference angle is formed, it's the acute angle between the vector and the x-axis, so this is our reference angle. And we would find it by taking 360 and subtract 310. So we have a 50 degree reference angle. To find the value of trig functions of angles that are not in quadrant 1, find the trig function of the related angle and then determine the sign as follows. If the vector lies in quadrant 2, our reference angle, our related angle, will be this angle right here between the vector and the x-axis. We draw a perpendicular line to the x-axis, and this is our reference triangle. Our reference triangle will always have one side on the x-axis and one side parallel to the y-axis. If the vector lies in quadrant 2, we can see that this side is going to be a negative value because we need to go left to get to our point. This side of the reference triangle will be a positive number, and our hypotenuse is always positive. So make that note. 
the hypotenuse is always positive. Basically, that's because um, this is defined to be the distance from the origin to the point, and distance is always positive. So using these, if our vector lies in quadrant 2, and theta is my reference angle, then I know that the sine of theta will be opposite over hypotenuse, so positive divided by a positive. So my sign will be positive in quadrant 2. The cosine of my reference angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative divided by positive. So my cosine in quadrant 2 will be negative. And my tangent of my reference angle Tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent, so positive divided by a negative. So my tangent will be negative in quadrant 2. If my vector lies in quadrant 3, my reference angle is formed here. It's the acute angle between the x-axis and the vector. I need to draw my perpendicular side perpendicular to the x-axis. And I can see that this side of the reference triangle is going to have a negative x value. That one's negative because we're going left from the origin. We're going down here, so this one is negative. And then the hypotenuse is always positive, so that's the sign there. Again, let's look at our sine of theta. If our theta lies in quadrant 3, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that will be a negative divided by a positive, which is negative. And my cosine of theta... For my reference angle, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative over positive, and that will give me a negative value for the cosine. And then tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent, so negative divided by a negative, and we know that negative divided by negative is positive. If my vector lies in quadrant 4, again, my reference angle is right here. Um, I need to draw my side of my reference triangle perpendicular to the x-axis. Um, my x value, or my horizontal component, is going to be positive because I'm going right. And then down would give me a negative vertical component and my hypotenuse is positive. So the sine of my reference angle is going to be negative divided by positive, which is negative. My cosine of my reference angle is positive divided by positive, which is positive. And my tangent is negative over positive, so negative. Let's do a few problems. We're asked to evaluate 4 times the cosine of 135. Now 135 is in quadrant 2 because uh, that measure is bigger than 90 and less than 180. So our 135 is 
measured this way, but I'm going to need my reference angle. My reference angle here is found by taking 180 and subtracting 135. So I have a 45 degree reference angle. Now my reference triangle, you form that by dropping a perpendicular to the x-axis. And we know that if this is 45 and this is 90, then this one's also 45. We can put in our sides. This is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So we can put in 1, 1, root 2. And then um, remember that this is a negative, and this one's positive, and the hypotenuse is positive. So to calculate this value, I would have 4 times, and then the cosine of this angle is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over root 2. When I do the multiplication here, I have negative 4 in the numerator over root 2. This needs to be rationalized, so I'll multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. So this is negative 4 root 2 over 2. But now I can simplify 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I have a negative 2 root 2. Do another one. Here we have a negative 2 times the cosine of a negative 150. So let's draw our reference triangle for that. A negative 150 is going to go clockwise 150 degrees will put me in quadrant 3. This is 150. I can take 180 minus 150 and get a 30 degree reference angle. Now to complete my reference triangle, I need to bring that perpendicular to the x-axis. I know that I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I can put my uh, reference measures in there. If I let the hypotenuse be 2, then the side opposite the 30 is half of that, and the side opposite the 60 is half of that times the square root of 3. And then since this is going left, I have a negative here, and this one's down, so a negative here, and my hypotenuse is always positive. Now I can uh, work on my problem. I have negative 2 multiplied by and then I'll use my reference triangle to get the cosine of negative 150. Cosine is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have negative root 3 over 2. This 2 in the denominator and this 2 in the numerator will cancel. And I have a negative 1 times a negative root 3 which is just root 3. Let's do one more. 5 thirds times the cosine of 300. So I need 300 degrees. It's going to go all the way around to quadrant 4. If this is 300, then my reference angle is going to be 60 because I would take 360 minus 300. Complete our reference triangle by uh, bringing the perpendicular to the x-axis. I can put my sides in for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'll put 2 on the hypotenuse. And then opposite the 30 is half the hypotenuse. And opposite the 60 is half the hypotenuse times the square root of 3. Um, this is going to the right, so it's positive, but this one is going down, so we have a negative root 3. So my problem then is 5 thirds times 
and then I'll get my cosine of 300 from this reference triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over 2. So when I do the multiplication, 5 times 1 is 5, 3 times 2 is 6.